My name is Brian Mern. I'm on Team 2, and uh, we took on Robonaut, the future of space products. My team members were Lily Eights, myself, and George Lopez. Good afternoon, I'm Leandria, and the work submitted in this project is solely prepared by myself, Brian, and, and George, and in its original excerpts. If we have included excerpts from other people, we have make sure we have clearly identified that within the, the text or the references. Um, all of the drawings, computer-aided programs, formulation, design work, and prototype development are recorded in this document and also original, and if not, they're prepared by the same team of students. So I want to begin with the history of robotics. A uh, robot, by definition, is something that's uh, mechanical and electrical based. Uh, it doesn't have to be electrical based. Back in the ancient times, it was ran by gears, uh, either wind powered or water powered or even human powered. So the electronics part of it isn't exactly necessary. However, in today's date, it is a little bit more common. Uh, you have more intelligent robotics that have sort of intelligence with the CPUs and all of their programming. Um, Robotics goes all the way back to the ancient times, even, you know, the Greeks, the Chinese, these all had sort of the beginnings of robotics, but you don't see it on the scene until about the industrial age. Uh, this is when you had robotic arms, and the technology sort of surpassed a point where all of a sudden they can take on tasks with more efficiency, more accuracy, uh, more stamina than a human can, and this is sort of where the shift in robotics came. Humanoid robots are sort of a new era in robotics. Um, as suggested, the humanoid means that they're human in shape. The reason you want humanoid robots is, one, uh, they're a little bit more friendly because they look like humans. Uh, they're more interactive for children, um, people who aren't so used to robotics. Also, uh, humans are very dexterous. Uh, our hands, our fingers, we have several degrees of freedom. And if you can have a robot that manipulates a human hand or complicated motions, it allows for sophisticated movements and sophisticated actions to be taken care of. Uh, for our project, we focused on the robotics of space. And robotics are very important in space for several reasons. One, if you send it to space, you don't have to take care of it. Um, you know, humans, you have to feed them, you have to make sure they don't die. A robot can be expendable. You can send it up, uh, it can shoot back the data, and you can just leave it there, which is great. Uh, also, robotics gets to test things. So, we feel the environment out, and then when we're ready, then we can send humans. So, these are some of the projects that have uh, notably been sent to space. Curiosity rover is one of the most uh, Ambitious, it's the rover that was sent to Mars. Uh, later we integrate in our report how Robonaut is, for future designs, uh, expected to go to Mars and, and because of its dexterity, uh, explore uh, more efficiently than the Curiosity rover. Hello, I'm George Lopez. Um, I'm going to give you a brief history and a background of the robotics themselves. Uh, robotics have been seen throughout ancient times, from the Islamic Golden Age to Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, we've seen designs and drawings of many of them, either powered by wheels, pulleys, water, uh, even some hydraulic steam, uh, things such as the wooden dove, silver swans, things like that. But today in the modern day, we look at robotics in a different sense. We see more electronics. We see a little more innovativeness. We see something that we don't have to control ourselves, but that controls itself. Uh, we're focusing more on the humanoid robot in our generation for the fact that it leads to our future and to us helping ourselves. Uh, we see a humanoid robot as a more friendly robot than we would a non-humanoid robot. So it makes it easier for us to interact with them. Uh, Certain robots that have already been uh, created are such as the Valkyrie, uh, the Shaft, the Honda one, uh, the RB1A, RB1B, uh, and currently the RB5 is in production, or is in uh, trials. 
Uh, in the past we've gone, and in the present, we have many robots, as you see. Uh, in 1987, we had the Flight Tunnel Robotic Servicer, which was a rover system. Uh, we've had the Mars Pathfinder in 97 that was taken over as a rover. Uh, that actually is currently still in use. Um, in 2011, on its final mission, we had the Canadian Arm, which was this one right here, which was used for spacewalks and for retrieving satellites. Uh, in 2013, we had the Rasser, uh, that when it was able to excavate uh, different surfaces of different planets or in Mars, different different planets such as Mars. Um, currently, we're working on certain robots such as the Swarmies, which are small ant light robots that work in conjunction with each other to go and fulfill a specific goal. And of course, DARPA, the military personnel, we're looking into exoskeletons to see if we can help improve our soldiers. Hello once again, I'm Leandria, and I'm going to continue on with the Robonauts, and Brian himself mentioned it a little bit early in our presentation, so I'm just going to further give you guys a background on, on what the Robonaut is and a few, for a few the future advancements. So NASA, they designed this Robonaut, um, and they teamed up with General Motors to create this uh, Robonaut 2. But <coughs> the project began in 1996, and the first version it was in the year 2000, which is R1. Um, the robots are dexterous robots, um, humanoid robots, and because of its hands and fingers and its ability to move um, like a person, so they can perform the task as we would. The robot can either think for itself or they can have controllers that tells them what to do and they issue out the robot the time to actually go and do the task. So let's say if you're speaking to the robot, the robot will be able to figure out what the task that you're telling it to do, and then from there you'll see the response of the ro robot. Now R2 flew into the space station on the Discovery, which is SCS-133, and the task were to see the response after the flight and to allow further testing to help, to help advance the robot to do human interaction as we would go, for instance, go to Mars. Um, and for future advancements, GM are looking to use these robots as testing for when they build cars to make it a safer, a safer environment for, for us people. Um, in the next slide, you'll see R1 and the Centaur that's right next to it. So R1 is actually stationed at a few, a few other places. And um, R2 is much more advanced, but in the upcoming, upcoming, I guess, months, we'll see how R1 and R2 differ from one another and the advancements that they made from each one. 